Okay, welcome to part six. Um, in the previous part, we coded this sort of simple HTML form and talked about databases. Um, in this part, we're going to create the code to process this form and actually create the message, i.e. insert the rows into the table. Um, so what we're going to do is go to our code and we're going to, right at the very top, we're going to add a big PHP block, like so. And then here, we're going to check to see if the form has been submitted, so i.e. if is set post to post subject post body, not persod, post body. And if it has, we're going to do some sort of error checking, and then we're going to submit the form if you know if necessary. Okay, so that's that done. So first thing we're going to do inside this. Um, block here is do a little bit of error checking so what we're going to do is to find an errors array which is what I sort of always do now um, if I can remember how to spell errors okay so this is going to be equal to a new array like so and then this errors array or this array is going to contain all of our error messages error messages that happen um, on this form submission and then a bit further down the page we're going to display them all sort of in a big list so the first condition we're going to check is to make sure the to box isn't empty. So I'm going to do if empty post to. I'm going to add something to the errors array here. So errors like so. And with the message we're going to add is you must enter at least one name. Why not? It's fairly straightforward. The second condition is going to make is going to check to see if the subject is empty, and then the same for the body. So just code these out in the same way. So if empty post subject, oops, uh, errors equals um, the subject. Not quite what I typed. The subject cannot be empty M O T M P T mm, yeah okay good and add punctuation and the same for the body so I, what I could do is just copy this down for the sake of time oops like so and then the body here okay so um, these two subject and body these two things are sort of fine as they are, or we can do for, well, I mean obviously you can add more validation to this if you feel like you need to so one thing you might want to do is check to see if there are like an excessive number of links which is sort of something someone might do for spamming um, you could also include the stop forum spam check um, with the username, which would be a bit pointless because you should really do that on registration, but that's just something you might want to think about um, I think I've done a video on that, I can't really remember but mm, go go look, go search um, so the subject and the body are kind of fine um, to leave at basic validation, i.e. just making sure they're required. Um, I've also done pusot again. So just fix these. Right, oops. Okay. Um, how about the two, the list of users you want to um, send the message to, um, does have to have slightly more strict validation. Um, for one thing, we kind of need to check the form of it to make sure it looks a bit like a comma-separated list. Uh, and also we need to make sure that all of the users that are entered actually exist um, because otherwise people might start sending you know what will happen is we'll get in the conversation members table a list of users um, that are members of conversations that don't actually exist and can never apply to them and can never delete them so that data will just be stuck in the table forever basically um, and also, what might happen is that someday some user might register with the same ID or the same name or something like that, um, and they will just have loads of messages appear, which would be a bit weird for them. So, one thing we definitely need to do is make sure that all of the users entered actually exist and have valid user IDs. Um, so, the way we're going to do that is fairly straightforward, and I'll explain it as we go along because it's a bit odd in a way, but anyway. Um, so, what we need to do is if this check has passed, so we can just add another check here, so else if, because obviously if the um, user ID is empty, i.e. this error has happened, there's no point then checking to see if that user exists, because it just won't, it's not going to happen. 
So we're only doing one of the, well, we're only doing, we're only showing one error message for the two field is what's actually happening. Anyway, the second check is we're going to do is to make a sort of fairly basic check on the form of the username, sorry, the, the form of this value. So we're going to use a regular expression to do this because that's a fairly good thing to use for this. So we're going to do if preg match or preg, which I kind of prefer. So the preg match function um, will return the number of matches. So what we're going to do is check to see if it is equal to zero, i.e. no matches. And then we're going to show an error. Well, we're going to add an error. Um, so the um, sorry, the pattern that we want to match is one of a comma separated list of letters and spaces. Um, so this is uh, well, I'm just assuming this is what you would have used for your username validation on registration. Um, obviously, you should include what error characters are valid username characters and commas, and also spaces because some people like to do their lists instead of like thing, thing, thing. They like to have spaces. I'm one of those people. I like spaces. Spaces are good. Anyway, the regular expression we're going to be using um, is well, what's going to be in that first parameter. Second parameter is the string you want to try and apply that expression to. So this can be post two. Um, and the actual expression we're using, um, well, it has to be delimited, so it has to have something that's the same at either end. Um, after this thing, this character, um, you can specify a number of modifiers. So I'm going to specify i, which just means case insensitive. So we don't have to like type a to z in capitals uh, and in lowercase. We can just do it in lowercase, and it'll still match. So what we want to match is a comma separated list, like I said. So we want to match the whole string. So I'm going to add the start of the string, which is represented by that weird arrow, shift and six, if you're wondering, and also the end of the string, which is the dollar symbol, um, shift and four, <laughs> for a UK keyboard. Don't really know why I said that, but well, whatever. Okay, so in between these, we can apply a expression to the entire string. Um, so the characters we want to match, we're going to do a very simple expression. It's just going to match the va like a valid list of characters. So we're going to match a to z, commas and spaces, and we want to have at least one character. Although that is already validated by the empty thing, so it's not really necessary. Okay. So just inside here, what we've done is determine that the user hasn't or looks like they have invent in invented. Um, inputted, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Inserted, submitted, I don't know. Um, sort of invalid looking data. So the message we're going to send is, um, uh, I don't know, the list of names you gave does not look valid. Wow, I spelled that entirely wrong. Oh no, not too bad. Okay, good. Okay, so the final check is going to be here inside this else block, and this is going to be the check to see if um, all of the users actually exist. Um, and we're actually going to do a little bit of work here as well towards sending the message, um, but that's not too much of a problem because it's still fairly neat, fairly clean. Okay, so the reason we're not doing this inside a check here, i.e., else if something. Is because we actually need to get the user IDs for the user names, and this requires a bit of a bit more code. So we need to first we need to split the list of uh, names into an actual list, as in an array, instead of just a string. So the way we do that is by using explode. Um, so I'm going to define a new variable here called user names, which is going to be equal to explode uh, on the comma. And the string we're going to be exploding is the post two string. Um, one thing you could do instead of this um, is use another regular expression to match all A to Z strings. However, I'm just doing it this way because it's a little bit simpler, and we've already done a regular expression, so doing another one would be a bit boring. <laughs> anyway, um, the disadvantage of this method is what I'm about to demonstrate is that if someone does input a comma separated list with spaces um, there will be a space at either the beginning or the start of each username in this list 
So what we need to do to get around that is to loop over the usernames by doing a for each loop like so. Um, so name and we'll just do name equals trim uh, yeah, trim name like that. And all that will do is remove any sort of trailing or preceding I guess white space from the name. Um, the reason we've got this and symbol here is that this means pass by reference uh, or by reference I guess I should say. That should be usernames. So all that means is that whatever you do to the variable name which just comes from here inside this for each loop will actually directly affect the array value instead of just applying to the name variable or whatever variable you've chosen. So it's just a little bit of a neater way of doing it than the alternative which would be using the full array here and the key but yeah whatever it doesn't really make much difference okay so without uh, well if we were to use the regular expression me method of just matching all sort of strings like so we wouldn't need this for each loop but it doesn't really matter too much to be honest okay so what we've got now is a list of names that we want to send the message to as an array so what we want to do is get the user IDs that um, um, you know that correspond to this list of names. So we want to get the ID for each user. So we're going to create a new function called fetch user IDs, and this is going to be part of the user backend file because it's part of the user system really. If it's getting user IDs, uh, it's going to be querying the users table. So let's go ahead and create that function now. Let's go to our user dot user dot ink dot php file, and let's create a new function underneath this one. So function fetch user IDs user names is the parameter which is going to be that array that we just created uh, i.e. the list of usernames um, so each of these names needs to be escaped uh, because it's going to be passed directly into a MySQL string so we need another for each loop here for each user names as a name like so and we're going to escape each name inside this string inside this loop sorry so name equals mysql real escape string of name okay so now everything in that array should be safe to use inside of a query so the query we're going to do is a mysql query so we're going to use the mysql query function not the qe function query passing in a string and what we're going to do is select the user id and the user name as it is in the database from the users table where the user name is one of the ones in this array the way we can do that is by using the mysql in keyword and then this takes um, sort of as its parameter if you like a list of comma separated strings so what we want to generate is something that looks a bit like this. So, oops. So name one could be me, and name two could be Bob. So that's what we want to generate, and we want to generate that from this array. So what we want is a value inside each of these. So what we can actually do is take this part out and implode on it. So you can see that if I take that part out, we actually get a value or one string element. Um, if we were to put one of those between each array element, so imagine a list, so that would be the first element, this would be the second one, paste it again, we get valid three elements, paste it again, we get valid four elements. Um, so that's sort of why this works. I've had a bit of trouble explaining that before, but I think it sort of makes sense. So what we can do is use the implode function, just by joining a string on like this, we can just use implode, and we're imploding that thing that I kept pasting a minute ago and we're using the user names array and that will just select all of the user IDs and user names where the username is one of those usernames um, so what essentially we're doing is um, well consider a username in that list that is not valid um, no row will be returned for that user so there you go that's that fairly straightforward um, so what we can do now is use this result to generate an array um, of usernames and their keys, you know, sorry not their keys, their IDs. 
So what we're going to do is actually store this result first because we're going to need to loop over it. So result equals, and then down here we're going to create a new array called names. Oh wow, that's really wrong. Array at, hmm, a bit strange. Anyway, so we need to loop over the query result by using a while loop. So we do while row equals mysql fetch a sock of the result, and while that's not equal to false, we're going to add something to this names array. So if we were to just do this, for example, uh, user ID, what we'd get is a list of user IDs, which is fine, that'd be okay. However, we kind of need to know which user names correspond to which user IDs. And that's why we also selected the user name up here. Um, because because when we come to the validation part, uh, we'll need to know which names were specified aren't in this list of IDs. Uh, and I'll get to that probably in the next part by now. But anyway, let's just add this. Uh, well, sorry, let's just play. What we're going to do to accomplish this is add the user name as the key of this array. So I'll demonstrate by example. So if I just do a row user name like so, what this will do is use the name, which would be Bob, for example, and then the value would be Bob's ID. So this array, what we're doing in that line there with the names equals thingy, is the same as doing names Bob equals Bob's user ID. So that's the kind of array we're going to have after this loop, obviously with all the users though. Okay, and the final thing we need to do is just return names. Okay, so that's this function pretty much complete. Um, I think I'm going to leave this here, and then in the next part we will um, go over how to actually use this function, and then I'll explain the validation that we use um, based on this list of IDs. Okay, so that's that, and thank you for watching, and come back for the next part.